one key thing would be get your fertilizer out now. If you got out now, then you'd get another round in by late August. You'll still get a good response from fertilizer if you go out now. Uh, also then reduce your demand on farms, then also split into your area. So increasing that rest period on paddocks, um, not grazing low covers then as well, and keeping your rotation length to that 30 days if you can. Also then another way then, you know, supplement now. So for like your meal feeding for your weanlings or your lambs to get the best response out of them now. Hello, I'm Kieran Lynch and welcome to Overcast, the Chocolate Sheep Podcast. Each episode will bring you less insights, advice and technical updates for the sheep industry. In this week's episode, I'm joined by my colleague Catherine Negan, host of The Beef Edge, as we catch up with Grass 10 advisor Neve Dyle to get an update on the current situation and discuss management tips for the coming weeks. Neve, you're very welcome. The year to date, growth has been very poor on farms and there are a number of factors that have limited grass growth over the last number of months. What have they been, Neve? So, yes, Catherine, it has been a very good, difficult year for grazing. So we have to look at the pasture-based Ireland data. Growth is currently 0.75 tonnes of dry matter per hectare behind the five-year average. So contributing factors then to this poor growth this year are kind of like lower temperatures, especially at night, even lower levels of sunshine, that dry, harsh, northerly wind, um, high monthly rainfall levels just to date there in 2024, and then soils are recovering from higher levels of poaching or damage that would have, you know, due to this wet spring. This year, you know, it has brought poor growth, but also also has brought, you know, poor utilisation and pasture quality is down. Most definitely, even in relation to fertiliser, responses varied on farm. Is there a difference in fertilisers that farmers have used and the response they've got? So, yeah, Catherine, it has been a difficult year for fertiliser response in terms just because the reasons above in terms of the contributing factors that we spoke about earlier and for nitrogen fertilizer um there's research been done at Johnstown Castle it has shown similar total grass dry matter yields across fertilizer nitrogen products products then that they were compared then would have been can urea and protected urea um so there has you know it's been similar grass growth similar grass yield to date across them three fertilizers but however, on farm level, then we're kind of seeing a higher response to compounds and especially a higher response to slurry. And that's following the farmers doing their nutrient management plan, having had taken soil samples and following the fertilizer plan on that. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Neve, if we look at the current situation on farms, look, we've seen a bit of an increase in growth rate in the last 10 days or so, but it is very variable out there. A lot of farmers are still very tight for grass. There's no big covers built ahead of them. What advice do you have for farmers in that situation or maybe a bit behind with covers? Yes, Kieran, I suppose this is happening a lot on farm at the moment. You know, farmers are tight for grass or, you know, our poor grass quality has been there. And the most important thing is probably reducing your demand on the farm. So whether this is, you know, taking out cold cows, maybe doing nearly scan, picking out cows that are empty, culling them. Um, you know, it's it's about kind of planning if there's animals on the farm, are they going to stay on the farm or are you planning on selling them? Maybe, you know, selling them now because like, for example, a 500 kilo animal will eat 10 kilos per day. If you have 10 of them animals, that's going to be one bale every two days. Um, so, do you know, if you could reduce that demand, it'd make an awful lot of difference. Also, in other ways, you know, how is kind of heavier cattle, maybe, do you know, weigh now and see their animals you pull out for finishing. Um, supplement lambs is another option. Now, it has to be noted that there is many lambs on farm that are light at the moment. Um, so they will be carried on for a longer period of time. So this will affect your demand. Also, then another option is spread your fertilizer. So it's important to get this out in August as soon as possible. Maybe you touched on something there, like when we're talking about reducing demand, I suppose we have to be conscious. Animal performance is back this year. You mentioned lambs are back. Cattle are probably back a bit as well. Making that assessment and seeing where and where they are putting a stab on it and how much longer they're going to be on the farm because lately it is we could be carrying a higher demand into the next couple of months yes exactly and like especially if you're short winter feed as well you know you don't want to be after carrying these animals over the winter either so you know it's important to be re- way now and review and see these animals that you can um, pick out for finishing so Neve, like as we're coming into august now i so we need to start thinking about building covers into that back end we're going into periods where growth rates will typically tail off if you take that current situation, how can farmers go about building covers now over the next couple of weeks? Yes, yeah, so Kieran, I suppose it's important that they'd start on time. One key thing would be get your fertilizer out now. Um, as if you got out now, then you'd get another round in by late August. Um, you know, this is still 
you'll still get a good response from fertilizer if you go out now. Uh, also then reduce your demand on farm. So as we spoke about earlier, you know, ways to reduce your demand. Then also splitting your area. So increasing that rest period on paddocks, um, not grazing low covers then as well and keeping your rotation length to that 30 days if you can. Also then another way then, you know, supplement now. So for like your meal feeding for your weanlings or your lambs to get the best response out of them now. So really going with fertilizer now, Neve. It's really going to give you an opportunity to go either again in late August and still get a response for that round of fertilizer. Yes, exactly, Catherine. Yeah. So, do you know, important to go now if you can. And second, cut silage is being cut out at the moment and there will be a release for some farmers in that situation. What advice have you for managing those fields and paddocks where second cut silage is being taken out at the moment? So I suppose, look, if a paddock is ready to go out now or, you know, your second cut, you think it's ready to go, I'd be advising to go cut it now. You know, because the longer you leave it, the more quality will be reduced. So if you leave it another two weeks, you're reducing your quality. So that's one t- one thing to think of. Another thing then, when you're taking your cuts, then you need to, it's important to replace your P and K offtakes. So oh, every four bales per acre, it's important then to return one thousand gallons of slurry per acre then on that paddock. Um, because when you cut silage, one hundred percent of your P and one hundred percent of your K is offtaken. So it's important to replenish your P and K. Another then is kind of spread your slurry now. So utilize your slurry over the next month. Um, get it out on your second cuts then after being cut. And the aftergrass will be of huge benefit to a lot of farms in the coming weeks. Yes, yeah, so the aftergrass then will be important then. And it, you know, it'll allow you then to extend your grazing season. Or keep animals oh. out grazing. Neve, overall, very little surpluses have been removed on farms so far this year. Farmers completing the fodder budget. How do they fill the deficit if there is one? Um, so I suppose it's important to maybe reduce your demand as you're coming into your winter. So maybe trying to get animals, you know, finished or say if you're planning on selling weanlands, you know, not having these animals be carried over the winter. That'll, you know, inc- reduce your demand for silage. Also then um, start building your grass in the autumn. Um, it'll give you one, you know, it'll extend your grazing season on this side of the winter period. And then also then is the availability to maybe purchase silage then also that's an option. So also then, you know, there's time to get fertilizer out. Um, this will allow you then to maybe cut out surpluses. And also then you'd be correcting paddocks then, say paddocks that are gone to STEMI, you could apply fertilizer then and then take off your surpluses, surplus bales. Neva, I suppose like if I take a lot of what you've discussed it's probably highlighting one thing. There's a need to really act now on nearly every farm out there and make an assessment of what are a couple of key things we need to do over the coming weeks. So maybe just to summarize, like, how would you prioritize what the key actions are at the moment? So it's important to be going out walking your farm at least once a week, um, completing your fodder budget, you know, to see where you are. If you need to be cutting out surpluses, um, then also then another important key area is building your grass coming into your autumn. Um, correcting quality issues. So as I spoke about earlier, then if you're cutting out surfaces, it gives you an opportunity then to correct paddocks and apply fertilizer now. Apply it in August now when you're going to get the highest response from it and also make use of your slurry. So whether that's on second cut or grazing ground, do you know what? Get it out. Finally, Neve, you'll be hosting a monthly beef grass update and sheep grass update for farmers with management tips and advice. That's right, Catherine. Um, so this is going to be released every Saturday and we'll give you the most up-to-date grass advice and tips. It'll be a key tool in addition to our weekly Grass 10 newsletter and they can also subscribe to the weekly Grass 10 newsletter on the Chagas website. That's great. Thanks very much, Neve. Thanks, Thank Neve. you. We'll leave it there for this week's episode. I'd like to thank Neve and Catherine for coming on. I have included a link in the show notes to the Chagas Grass 10 newsletter. You can subscribe to that and you get fuller information on the webpage. That's it for me for updates on the sheep program. Keep an eye on our Twitter page at Chagas Sheep. I'm Kieran Lynch. Thanks for joining us. Subscribe and follow us wherever you get your podcasts.